What's up guys, welcome to Wrench Capital Charts. Today we're taking a look at Tesla stock, ticker symbol TS. LA on a variety of time frames in anticipation of the next trading day. Friday, April 19th. All right guys, Tesla stock here today down $5.52 per share in regular trading hours. It's minus 3.55%. It is down about another almost two bucks in after hours. Listen guys, after hours movement, no matter what the stock is doing, with the rare exception of like a high volume after hours earnings event, you have to take after hours with a grain of salt because volume, the major like 99% of the time, is going to be very, very low. Okay, and stocks are easy to move on very, very low volume. So take that with a grain of salt. It is the real price. Just take it with a grain of salt. Now, Tesla here today getting uh, downgraded. We got a, a downgrade from Deutsche. It, it wasn't a you know, from hold to like strong sell kind of downgrade. It was a downgrade from a, from a buy rating to a hold rating. And the analysts, they, uh, they slashed their price target from 189 to 123. Now that sounds drastic, but understand that a lot of these price targets and ratings don't get updated all that often. So you'll see big adjustments when that individual, which is what it is, it's an individual analyst making the call, decides to change their opinion. Then you get drastic changes and it looks crazy, but understand that who knows how long ago that original price target was set. All right, now let's pull out as much bias as we can that the market gave us here today, starting with a quick analysis of the volume profile here on the five minute chart. Listen, by the way, if you guys wanna get real time alerts of my in place stocks um, that I'm trading every single day, I'm scalping these stocks these are not only my quickest trades, but being a primarily a scalper, these are also the, the type of stocks that make up the majority of my trading volume, at least intraday. If you guys want to get those, take a look at the four. There's four different membership tier options at that link in the pinned comment. Uh, by the way, that link, that'll let you get grandfathered in at the current rate, so you'll be immune to future price raises. But let's take a look here, guys. The moves that I primarily want to look at here on Tesla, and we'll just be quick on the five minute. I want to take a look at that drop and then recovery. And then we'll see if there's anything else out of the ordinary, but that's all I'm going to circle here for now. If we take a look here, we got a high volume opening bar. We then increased volume on that, that selling bar on the second five minute bar, right? And then volume faded pretty quickly. So the only thing that's out of context really is the increase in volume on that second bar, which is a small bearish bias, but it didn't maintain. It's not like we're seeing five consecutive bars that faded very fast. Okay. So aside from that off the open, we got this increase into the close, but this is very normal. And again, this bar, that's the first five minute bar after the closing bell, which we know on, on a stock like Tesla is very common to see that. Uh, that that's rebalancing going on from funds and institutions, and it rarely contributes to any real substantial movement, as you can see there uh, on the candle. Usually just because it's such a heavy mix of buys and sells All right, on the rebalance. Now let's take a look at the psychological self-fulfilling prophecy levels and see how they're doing here on the 30 minute. Now you can see here guys on the 30 minute, Tesla has been struggling to get above and claim and hold above that 50 period moving average, which is that white line. Listen, bears, as that thing descends, you wanna continue to see that act as a resistance level. That's your best case scenario, bulls. I would prefer to not see that come and get below 150 just because you're getting below a psychological level and causing more problems in that region. I would love to see Tesla reclaim that 50 period as soon as possible, ideally tomorrow on high volume, get a low volume retest, right? So a high volume rip up through, low volume retest, high volume bounce, pull away. That would be great. But let's move on here and take a look at the four hour chart. Now, listen guys, I'm not gonna waste a lot of time here. I'm always watching the four hour, but I'm watching it primarily when these moving averages that are specific to the four hour, the 50 period and the 200 period on the four hour chart come into play. I, I, I mean, look guys, Tesla has had a rough last three, four days, four days. And we currently find ourselves, you know, and if you take the after hours price, we're about 12, 12 and a half percent away from, uh, from that 50 period, which is crossing about down beneath now that 166.50 to 167 channel that we were talking about just about a week ago, it's 12.5% now. So listen, if, if we 
if Tesla is able to get back and and within reasonable range of that 50 period, we're going to talk about it again. Um, you know, and if something happens intraday that's crazy and that comes into play, just know that I will be watching it. Uh, but but that's that's it. So let's move on from the four hour because the daily here is is kind of the real story. All right, now listen, we have earnings coming up. That's not until the twenty third. All right, so we're looking at tomorrow primarily. So if we look here, we're going to ignore the fact that earnings are coming up because even with the expected move, we have an expiration tomorrow, so we don't have to worry about earnings quite yet. Um, when I'm looking at this here, in the last few days, we've broken downside of that 166.50 to 167. We've broken below 160. And then last time we talked about Tesla, now listen, Tesla is usually a daily upload. Yesterday was the first day that I missed videos in I think the history of the channel probably but listen Tesla is a daily upload so if you haven't done so already please subscribe to the channel but now today here we broke downside beneath that 154.50 155 area okay now not only did we do that but we also broke down beneath a level that I don't have drawn because it's a psychological level primarily and not necessarily a technical level yet which is 150. And by the way, guys, psychological levels tend to become technical levels, and then they're both. Technical levels tend to become psychological levels because they become so obvious that everybody draws them and looks at them. And so usually, one or the other, they, they usually end up being both, as long as they're important enough and, and obvious enough. And 150 is a pretty obvious psychological level, right? I mean, I mean, to me, it's the most important one between 100 bucks a share and 200 bucks a share, right? So... Tomorrow's a really simple play here, or I should say a really simple story here. Bears, you want to reject off 150 as hard as you possibly can. And Bulls, we want to hold above 150 as hard as we possibly can. We closed at 149.93, so this is anybody's ball game. Now again, the stock's down a little bit after hours. Take it with a grain of salt. This is the daily chart. It's not going to show after hours, okay, but... Bears, you want to reject 150 as much as po as hard as possible and as much volume as possible. And bulls, get above 150 and hold it on big volume. That's tomorrow's story here on Tesla. Now look here, implied volatility, it is on the rise. So if you're seeing some IV pump, that would be why. If you're looking to purchase contracts, just understand that buying new contracts right now, you're running a little bit of, a, of an elevated risk of potential IV crush. Um, there we go. If IV starts to fall again. Okay, from the point that you bought it. Now, expected move. We have an expiration tomorrow, so the market is expecting plus or minus $4.09 a share. Uh, tomorrow's closing price difference in tomorrow's closing price from today's closing price, not the current price in the after hours. That's based on the closing price, okay? Plus or minus $4.09 a share movement, you know, tomorrow at the close. That's the market's expectation. And that's, that's a technical term, the expected move. It's being priced by the expected volatility, um, really from the implied volatility of each expiration, out of the actual traders. So that's a big sample size that we get, and that's the, the market's opinion of a one standard deviation expected move. Of course, there's no directional bias there. That's the volatility bias. The directional bias we get out of everything we just did, we couple that with the volatility bias, helps us trade much more effectively, especially with options. And then there's one more thing we can do here, the, the directional bias out of the options traders. So we had over 2.3 million total contracts traded here today. 1.08 million were calls and 1.29 million were put. So we are seeing a bearish bias on the overall. It's not massive, but it's there. Okay. But with that overall bearish bias, if we break that down by the short term speculators, because, you know, this channel is primarily mostly about uh, day to day analysis videos. I'm an active trader. I think that's an important look um, that is probably underrepresented in the market. But we break this down, right? The zero to 20 delta range, those are the short term gamblers, right? Those are the speculators in the very short term making short term bets. What is their bias? That's more important to us, I think. 492,000 calls and 298,000 puts. That's a heavy call side bias out of the short term speculators, even given the, the slight bearish bias on the overall ratio. So listen, guys, if you're getting value out of these videos, I think um, leaving a like, you know, it's free. It's easy. 
you're probably already done. It helps out tremendously. You have no idea. Like the the algorithm to push these videos um so that i can continue to keep prioritizing them so that it makes sense to do so because i mean look the reality is here guys i love providing value i do all this myself i look at this every day anyway even if i weren't making videos before i made this channel i was still doing the, the exact same thing but of course making the videos um adds you know quite a bit of time it takes probably a three hour chunk out of my day two to three hours so I just like to make sure that it's providing value. So listen, let me know. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.